Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video. This is, uh, this is my review of <laughs> Rebel Moon <laughs> Part 1. And I just want everybody to understand that I, I really just, while I was watching it, I jotted down some bullet points and I'm going to take you through it. And then I'm just going to give you my just bare bones, this is what it is when I'm done. Really quick before I start, I, I viewed this as an opportunity. I see where Star Wars is at. I see where science fiction in general is at and then sci-fi fantasy is at and i thought you know if they could do a good job of this then they have a real opportunity to take a a, a bold leap and to be kind of in a leadership role uh, as far as netflix and 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 rebel moon and Zack snyder could be in a leadership role in this genre so with that Let's get into it. So, one of the things I noticed right away was Cora is is the main character, and she's extremely capable in terms of fighting and defending herself and soldiering. You almost get that kind of, like, Ray from Star Wars Mary Sue vibe, except you get the backstory. You get the backstory. She was very, very high up in the military, at the, near the tippity of the top of the military, and so you can kind of give, there's some give there, and they do an okay job. She does get, you know, whacked around quite a bit. It's not as if she just, like, just runs rickshaw over everybody, but at least you get a backstory. So that was one thing I noticed right away, which was okay. And then people saying the farmer guy is a loser, uh, and then he's some bum, and, I'm, and I, I, I'm trying to remind people that that's actually not that abnormal. In a lot of stories, there's, there's, a, there's sort of a beta male <laughs> that's not... That's not new. Like Saving Private Ryan, for example. You have Corporal Opum, and he's scared all the time, and it's a problem, and in the end, it, it affects everybody else because he's supposed to be running ammunition to everybody, and they're running out, and then one guy dies because of it. So that isn't... For me, that's not an issue. It, they, they, he was a farmer, and he's presented as a farmer, and he's totally out of his element in this war stuff, and that's okay. That... that, that for me, was not a problem. I don't know why that was a big deal to some of the people that were reviewing it, some of the critics that were reviewing this this film. Uh, another thing that's kind of interesting is that there's, beyond the fact that uh, Zack Snyder presented this to Lucasfilm as a possible movie for Star Wars, is you also have the guy who, who plays... So he's sort of like the Han character. I can't even remember his name, but in the film. But he, the real actor, auditioned for the role of Anakin when he was a kid which is kind of funny so you have those connections with star wars uh one of the other things i noticed that they really fleshed out the cora character the main character they spent a lot of time they brought you back with flashbacks and did a lot of that stuff and so i think because she was so fleshed out and they spent so much time on that some of it in my opinion they they could have uh withdrew and shortened things but they did so much to flesh out her character that it felt like the other characters had no backstory right now i'm i'm talking to you like as in like i'm like a half an hour in like maybe 45 minutes okay at this point so i'm not saying that they do flesh out any other characters or not i'm just saying that's where i'm at, at this point uh the visuals were really good it was certain points where it gave me kind of that tron legacy vibe and a lot of it's just sort of classic snyder visually it's a good movie visually there's nothing wrong with it at all it's it's quite good so the big criticism that i have for this movie beyond some of the stupid stuff at the end is that they spent snyder spent half the movie on what should have been a musical interlude recruitment of fighters you know what i mean like it, it should have been like a turn me loose turn me loose and then she's going around and you know gathering all these fighters and then and then once they're gathered you hash their story out along with each other right so so you didn't know a whole lot about for example han solo in the first star wars movie right but you got what you needed from the subsequent scenes after obi-wan and luke do board uh, the Millennium Falcon, and then they're sitting around, and you get that. You got a little bit of backstory in their conversation, but you get a lot more as they're interacting together. You know, hash out the the, the, the storylines of these characters, you know, around the fire, or they're talking, or whatever, but Snyder kind of did the opposite. He spent, so they'd go to recruit a, uh, another fighter, for, uh, whoever it was, whether it was the guy who rode the Griffin or whether it was uh, Buddy from Blood Diamond, I can't remember the actor's name, and they they would spend, you know, a solid block of time, five, ten minutes, whatever it was, going through his 
his backstory or their backstory, her backstory, whoever it was that they were recruiting for this, you know, rebellion. So instead of getting their backstory intertwined with like a really good scene of the characters together talking or what have you, like they do in most films, in most stories, you get Cora talking to Buddy for an exorbitant amount of time and then he get and then he's recruited so the entire backstory is just the guy or who, whoever it is explaining themselves to Cora and no one else is involved and again it's kind of a backwards way of writing and I don't know why he did this because what he should have done is recruit them all in a very sort of expeditious fashion and then once they're together you have scenes of them together you're getting that exposition in those scenes about who they are and what they believe and blah 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 you, I mean you get a little you should do a little bit of that when they're recruiting but you don't need to go into a whole big thing and he spent so much time in this movie before they were together so you didn't get this idea that the characters were really in unison and together and that they were part of a team because we didn't get really get any scenes like that we got literally none it's kind of like he was trying to create say like a fellowship right so like there's the fellowship of the ring and lord of the rings he's trying to create like a fellowship of these rebels but they don't there's no scenes together in fact kai the spoiler now who ends up being you know a turncoat he literally has one like three minute two minute scene with Korra and that's it and there's just nothing else between any of the characters and each other there's just that one scene and so everything feels like it's just happening and there's no like there's no closeness there's no friendship it's just kind of is and you don't really know people's motivations because they, they again, he spent so much time. Like, the, her recruiting all these fighters literally is like two-thirds of the movie. Easily. It's the first two acts. And so there's no... It should have been the first act, and then the second act would have been them interacting together and them learning about each other and us learning about them and their motivations through that process. But we didn't get any of that. <laughs> it was kind of don't get me wrong. Some of those scenes were kind of cool action wise, like the action was fine, but you got zero in terms of the characters, and that's where this movie was totally not like Star Wars at all. And I don't mean Star Wars like Disney Star Wars. I mean like. George Lucas Star Wars, where you get so much character building so that when scenes happen, there's just so much more tension. And as a viewer, you really care. And there's just so much more there. So again, the payoff was really weak with Kai. They have that one little scene and that was it. And then he blows the kiss and you're just kind of like, well, but it just felt empty. Because again, we got this such a small sample of their relationship, and so when he turns his back and he and he basically sells them and has them all get caught, and he blows her a kiss, you're like, bro, you've spoken to her three times. Like, we, we, there's no relationship there. Like, why why am I invested? Why do I care? And then we get this kind of um, we get this. The final recruitment is they recruit this guy who has some ships and he's got like a bunch of um, soldiers. He has a, he's, he's essentially like the actual rebellion, I guess. Except like this story's focused on Korra, but this guy's like established I, as like a rebel already, and he has all these ships and all these these soldiers. So then. So then Cora and the team recruit him and he's all like, yeah, I'm going to do that with you. But I'm like, why didn't we have the story about him then? Like, if, if, like he's clearly already been doing the work. So why are we focusing so much? But whatever. The problem with it was, again, it was, okay, he, he joins them. We don't know anything about him. So in the end, him and his, his like military that he controls or whatever, his people fight for you know the rebellion or whatever but we literally know nothing about him like we know absolutely nothing we get no backstory nothing he's just a guy and and so you're like why do i care what happens to him like why do i care what happens to any of these people i don't know any of them the only people you really get to know is the farmer the beta male and cora and everybody else is just kind of there maybe maybe it was a mistake of separating this into two parts because he felt it was too long. But again, I go back to it. Why did you spend so much time with exposition when no one was around except Cora and the team didn't get to learn about each other and we don't get to learn about how they interact with each other at all? And then there's a guy who basically we get this like monologue 
<laughs> from this guy towards the end it, that literally tells us the plot that we just watched. So like th- it, there's like this three minute monologue and he's telling us what we literally have been watching. Like we don't need that. Like Zach, we're not dumb. We already know all this stuff. Why are you telling me what I already know? I don't, I don't really get that. Like this is ultimately, this is a poorly written movie, like really poorly. <laughs> like it's, it's bad. And then finally the end the end end after the evil guy is cloned and then we we have this scene and it and it almost saved it for me in a way like it was still cringy i'll get into some of the cringe stuff as well in a second here um towards the end but the there was this final scene where the sort of the military guy is reincarnated so he's been killed and he's being reincarnated it kind of gives you those um elysium vibes like if you if you've ever seen elysium with matt damon really good movie and jody foster the main kind of uh bad guy military guy that's well i guess he's he's technically special ops in that movie he's working for jodie foster's dictator character and he gets killed and then he gets they use technology to kind of bring back his tissue and make him basically the exact same thing happens but what was interesting is while he's being reincarnated essentially or re reformed remade whatever he's able to come in contact with the guy who I guess is ruling everything and uh, Bolisarius, I guess, but it's in like this other, you get the sense it's in like this other dimension, other world, but it doesn't really get explained, but fine, whatever. That scene was actually kind of cool. That scene was kind of cool, you know, And but, but you're immediately taken away. It's like, so he's got these like alien creatures. Um, you don't know if they're aliens, but they got like helmets on and gear on and they're kind of controlling the, the, the apparatus to, to medicate this guy's body and reincarnate him or whatever, this military leader who was kind of a cool character actually, but like they all spoke like regular English. That was the moment where I was like, oh, okay, we're going to get alien talk and we're not going to know what they're saying. And ultimately we didn't need to know what they were saying because they were acting they were acting upon their words. So all we, so again, it's star Wars. No, it's nothing like star Wars. Like all we needed was them to be like, and then do their actions. And we would have understood what they were saying. We didn't need, but instead Snyder has them speaking English. So there's like, that's a small nitpick, but it's like, it's, 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 I don't know how this was possibly considered a star Wars film. And then, and then in the third act, when they start this big fight and you have no idea why, like, why are you even fighting right now when you are, so small it's so pointless and then they kill the guy and the whole cloning of him and everything is so cringy like you know those like you know those like plastic tube lights and when he's getting sort of reincarnated or whatever he's got all these scars and so they stick all these tubes in him and you're like oh my gosh what's going on and then all of a sudden they push a button the guys that should have just spoke alien they push a button and they were speaking english which is stupid but anyways they push a button and <laughs> And then it's literally those those tube lights from when I was a kid, like from like the the early nineties, and it's like blue and red, like guys, like the cringe level, like I can't even believe how bad that looked. It was absolutely like hilariously bad, and I want to say the saddest part is like the first scene when it shows the farmers and then it shows the the mother world guy that that was reincarnated and all those guys show up and and that was actually really well done so that first 25 minutes or so i was like man like this is i like what they're doing this is good and then it and then when as soon as she leaves there to go on her journey to after she you know kills all the soldiers because they were going to rape a chick and everything and all that stuff's great they did a really good job of that and then as soon as she leaves that planet and goes to recruit people it starts to fall off and then you're still kind of hanging in there and you're hanging in there and you're hanging in there and then once it gets to the third act you're like what am i watching and it's it's sad i was hoping that this was going to be really good like i said in previous videos i i I wanted this to be good in part to pressure companies like lucasfilm into doing better quality star wars or any other company from you know let's do higher quality science fiction higher quality sci-fi fantasy but that's not the case this is like brutally bad like in in the end it was terrible and again it sucks because it started off really good there was lots of potential and it just ended up being total 
trash. I don't know how this ended up being uh, approved for like whatever. What is he doing? Four movies? Like this is terrible. Honestly, terrible. And I can't believe how bad it is. I'm actually in shock right now at how bad it actually ends up being. Things are rushed, and and then and then at the end, it's so cringy. I can't even believe how cringy that ending was. And you don't even know why they're fighting, and why are they fighting, and everything's. It's weird because everything's rushed, but not rushed. Like I explained earlier, I don't need to keep going into it. But anyways, guys, that's 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 my review of Rebel Moon. It sucks. It's like a one. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I was all about it, but, like, I, I hate Disney Star Wars, and I was really hoping this was going to be good, but it sucks. Anyways, let me know in the comment section what you guys think. If you've seen it or haven't or whatever, let me know what you think. I just can't even believe it. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Please like and subscribe if you like this content, and have yourselves a really good day.